Good Monday morning, everyone. It's time for another week of prayer and devotion to get started up. And here we are. Thank the Lord for bringing us through uh, this weekend. And uh, I trust that those of you who have been uh, sick are on the mend. And I'm thankful uh, to be fully recovered myself and and uh, enjoy being in the house of the Lord this weekend. And I thank God for each of you uh, who have held me up in prayer and who are uh, praying for others on our prayer list each and every uh, weekday morning. Uh, this morning we have some praise reports to share with you. Uh, Megan Rackley, if you'll remember, uh, is a survivor from the Crothersville tornado. Uh, she has made the transition home with her family this weekend and she will be able to continue therapy now from there. So we thank the Lord for her progress. Uh, Carmen reports this morning that Russ continues to improve from uh, his broken clavicle, and also her Aunt Norma is continuing to show improvement in her battle with COVID. We give the Lord praise for these great updates this morning. In our prayer request today, we need to remember Michelle Walker's family, um, Michelle and her mother, Betty Cossey, uh, both um, um, stay in touch with this prayer team. And Michelle Walker's grandpa passed away yesterday. So we're praying for peace and comfort for them today. Also, Carmen asked us to remember the family of Shane, M Shane May. Shane passed away last night after a strenuous bout of pneumonia. Chloe Isaac is getting ready to start immunoglobulin infusions. And she's also preparing for a move to Georgia. So let's remember uh, Chloe as she's dealing with her health issues and preparing for this uh, life change. Melana Cummins, Beth Wheatley, and Marcia Moore all have been suffering with migraines and need our prayers today. Uh, we have several to pray for uh, regarding COVID. William and Grover Straysner, J.B. Goforth's sister, LaVon, who's been on a ventilator. Miss Angie, uh, who has been in the hospital with COVID pneumonia. Uh, I just learned yesterday that John Vaughn has uh, had COVID and flu. Uh, Pastor Carl Adams, we continue to pray for him, um, as well as for Debbie Biddick's daughters, Jamie Tibbs and Jessica, and also Jessica's husband, Mike. Uh, Zach Osgood's dad has been battling COVID. Judy Johnson's sister, Jenny, and her family uh, battling COVID. Uh, Dee Dee Sealert's sister Julie and her husband Paul and son Ryan all are recovering from COVID. And uh, Dee Dee told me this morning that uh, Paul is recovering uh, slowly but is doing better. Uh, Dee Dee's nine month old great niece Emery also now has COVID. So let's remember uh, that little child in our prayers today. Uh, others who have chronic lung and respiratory conditions, Don and Betty Cossey. With chronic bronchitis, Robbie Northrup and Kendra Ortiz both have COPD. J.R. Johnson has been in the hospital with pneumonia. Judy Williams is recovering from a sinus infection. Zach Osgood's brother needs healing of a seizure disorder. We have several who have been dealing with back pain, including Pam Pulliam's daughter Jenny, Tammy Lawson, Bob O, Melana Cummins, Britt Moore, James Graham, Terry Adams, Michael Parrott, and Renee, who is having problems with her hips and knees. Uh, Barbara Owens and Bob Perkins need healing of shingles. Baby Elsie, Penny Hudson, Jake Billingsley, Pastor Steve Sullivan's father, Cheryl Chance, Kenny Prenzel, and Brenda Storm's friend Melvin all need healing of heart conditions. Jasmine Fields has been dealing with premature labor. So we're praying for everything to go well for her in her pregnancy. We have many children who need our prayers today. Myra, Lorelei, Jenna, and Tucker have been battling cancer. Um, Abel Ray has been suffering from PKU syndrome for quite some time. Tano Lopez with spina bifida. Abram Page was born with GNA01 disorder. Grady Sappington's grandson has developmental issues. We're praying for Jamie Joe. Day, who needs healing of her liver, and her husband Frank uh, was sick over the weekend and needs a healing touch. Uh, those who are battling cancer today Tanya Schutz, Dwayne Lewis, Alicia Piero, 
Diane Escher, Claire, Marsha Moore's friend's grandparents, Jenny Coffey, James Graham's aunt, Kathy Bloss, Aaron Payne, Kathy Birch, Dennis, Fel Dennis Phelps, Sylvia Larimore, Kay, Ari Bowers, Edie Percival, Nathan Van Ingman, Lisa Workman, Christy Smith, a friend of Terry Adams, uh, Michael Boland, Monica Harmon, Linda Fox, Del Bishop, Lydia, Philip Randall, David Harris, and a lady who I know uh, who has uh, been diagnosed with stage four metastatic breast cancer and needs our prayers, but does not wish for that, uh, that to be public at this time, so that we'll treat that as an unspoken need, and we know that our God is a healer. Uh, Parkinson's disease remains a problem for Beulah Ziegler, Russ, my father Ron Bryant, and Tim Workman. Uh, Brother DeLott and Brother Riley March are both needing healing of MS. Heather Spence, Michael Parrott, Olivia, Terry Adams, and Regina Marlin's granddaughter Aubrey all have GI issues. Uh, Kristen's neighbor Natalie has GI issues and also suffers with diabetes. We're also praying for others who are dealing with diabetes, including J.R. Johnson, who, as we mentioned, is in the hospital with pneumonia right now, uh, Terry Adams' friend Marsha, Tim Workman, Emily Stanley, Cheryl Chance, Brother Pulliam, uh, Christian Carr, and Titus Dornbach uh, with type 1 diabetes and uh, or juvenile diabetes, and uh, myself with type 2 diabetes. I need your prayers as uh, I'm starting a new medication today. And I need prayers that everything will go well with that. Uh, Jim Connor is awaiting a kidney transplant. Brother Virgil Pulliam's brother needs healing of his kidneys, as well as healing of his liver and pancreas. Uh, J.B. Goforth has been on hospice care for many, many months and needs our continued prayers. Uh, we're praying for continued recovery, of course, from Megan Rackley, who we're thankful is recovering uh, rapidly from her injuries that she sustained in this tornado. Uh, baby Brantley Joe was recovering from open heart surgery last week. Brother Huey, uh, Carmen's cousins Kelly and Shannon, Tina's mother, and Sheila Sappington are all uh, recovering from stroke. Uh, Russ, as we mentioned, uh, recovering from broken clavicle. Anita suffered a broken neck recently. Eric Williams had ankle surgery and is um, going through a six-month period of rehab after that surgery. Uh, other health needs today, Kevin Gossett, brother and sister Pulliam's granddaughter Morgan, Meredith, Jimmy Holden, Bobby Larming, Nicole, Regina Bishop, Shirley Garner, Judy Williams' sister Mary, and Shirley Ruminer. Uh, also, Erica Ruff needs our prayers as she's been dealing with heartburn and chest pain this weekend. In our spiritual and family needs today, Baby G's adoption. Let's keep praying about that process. Annette and Dave, believing for continued healing in their marriage. Grace's best friend's family and Grace's uh, circle of friends. James and Angela Graham and their family. Sheila Outlaw, Mark and Caitlin, uh, Marcia and Britt need continued prayers for direction in dealing with issues with their son, Josh. They need prayers for all their kids and their granddaughter. Uh, Marsha's friend and her family need our prayers. Debbie Biddick's family, uh, Mingo Residential Care residents, Mingo Job Corps students and alumni, the Sappington family, Regina Marlin's family, Art Chandler, Beulah's family, uh, Caroline Sexton's family, Alicia, Dee Dee Sealert's biological father and his family, Rebecca Rush, uh, with an unspoken need ongoing with her family, Judy and Mike's family, and also special unspoken requests for their grandson, Michael, their granddaughter, Rebecca, and Rebecca's mother, Dana, uh, Cheryl's family member, Josiah, Terry Adams' children, Pam Pulliam's children, Charles and Amber Gossett, Barbara Owens, Jennifer and Brenda's family, and Andrea Perkins, who has a special unspoken request. Uh, all of these needs are very important. To the Lord. We also want to pray for uh, some North American missionaries uh, raising up new works. Aaron and Rachel Castillo uh, in Springfield, Missouri. Also, our new Burmese preaching point in Bevo Mill, Missouri. That's the St. Louis area. Um, and also, Victor Jackson family who are endeavoring to start a new work in Orlando. 
and they need our prayer covering today. Well, I welcome you today. Uh, thank you for being a part of this team this morning with emphasis on that word team. We do this together, and uh, I thank God that you are so faithful uh, to join me each weekday morning to pray for the needs of others. Uh, good to see uh, Brother Pulliam and Sister Pulliam with us this morning, uh, Kristen and Pam, or uh, Pam, that's Sister Pulliam. I'm seeing some of these names twice here. Sherman, good to see you today. Carmen, good to have you with us this morning. And Marcia, a good crew here to start out uh, Monday morning the right way. And uh, the right way is always starting our day out with prayer. I want to read to you this morning from Psalm, the, thir uh, the 39th Psalm. Um, and I guess we'll start reading about verse 7 here. It do, do you good to go back and read the verses preceding to kind of get a little more context. But we'll start with verse 7. It says, And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. To understand the reproach of the foolish, you need to go back and and read those preceding verses, and uh, and I will uh, allude to it some here in the devotion. Um, verse nine: I was dumb. That means I kept silent. I opened not my mouth because thou didst it. Um, you know, what a wise thing to acknowledge that the things that come into our lives are under the control of God. And David and Job was also careful in this regard to not give the enemy credit for his problems. But David here said, uh, Lord, thou didst it. Uh, it was you that allowed this these things to come into my life. I'm going to keep my mouth shut. I'm not going to react harshly. Uh, I'm going to allow you uh, to work this out. You know, two of the uh, most dreadful words to hear come out of someone's mouth is the words, I'm offended. When a person is in a place where they are suffering offense and they are acknowledging that offense, um, it, it's a very difficult time to help that person or to deal with that person because of the state of mind that they are in. Those words often accompany emotional reaction to a situation where you feel that you have been wronged by others. And if you aren't careful, uh, these frustrating moments will get the best of you, causing you to miss opportunities to display the love of Christ and instead to let our flesh take over and cause us to act out of character. Negative reactions only intensify negative circumstances. Let me say that again. Negative reactions only intensify negative circumstances. It's like pouring gasoline on a campfire. Uh, that type of behavior puts us in danger of becoming what David described here or the psalmist described here as the reproach of the foolish. Uh, this can destroy our effectiveness of our Christian's witness. And really the reproach of the foolish is simply uh, moving into this place of offense where nobody can really minister to us or help us because of our mindset and taking matters into our own hands. But the psalmist said, um, I kept my mouth shut. I was dumb. I just said to myself, the Lord allowed this and I'm going to allow him to deal with it. What a great attitude uh, for us to have to choose a godly response instead of reacting emotionally in the moment. When we do that, God's peace will guide us through difficult circumstances. This sort of response enhances our testimony and allows us to witness to others in a unique and powerful way. Very, very early after I was called into the ministry, I went through some terrible life circumstances, circumstances that really threatened the whole calling that um, I felt on my life. And during that time, there was a brief time when I felt hopeless and felt like that there was really no use to try. It was a dangerous place because in that place of offense, I felt like that 
uh, it was useless to to even attempt to try to do the will of God. And there was much temptation that came with that to act out of character. I'm not going to say I've never acted out of character in my life. That would uh, I don't want to you to think I'm a goody two shoes. We've all failed in that regard. But in this particular instance, uh, in the workplace as I was dealing with the turmoil that was going on in my personal life at the time, I had people that came up to me later and um, they began to tell me how much they respected me uh, because of how that I dealt with that situation. And so my testimony was enhanced in the end because of the way that I kept my mouth shut and maintained the proper attitude. And uh, we can choose what our attitude is going to be. We can't choose how we feel on the inside, but we can choose how we respond to it. And so today, whatever you're going through, if you're dealing with sickness, if you're dealing with a pain in your body, if you're dealing with a mental and emotional pain that's been caused by circumstances beyond your control or people in your life who have hurt you, today, this is the right response to take it to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, you did it. In other words, Lord, you allowed these things and the things that the enemy means for evil. The word tells us that God intends them for our good. He is going to make something great out of the negative circumstances that you might be dealing with this morning. And so with that in mind, let's go to the Lord in prayer today. And let's believe that as we pray, as we put these things in our hands, we open our mouth to him not to everyone else about our struggles, at least in the in the way of of um, using it, you know, in the bad construct or displaying a negative attitude. But we take it to the Lord in prayer. We bear our souls to Him, and He will come through for us today. Lord Jesus, we thank you today for Your Word. Lord, this Psalm has helped me, and I pray that it would help others today. Lord, who are suffering from problems in their lives and things that are beyond their control. Lord, everything that's going on today, you anticipated it. There's nothing that surprised you. The floods that have come into our lives, they are under your control. You have compassed them. You have uh, spoken to the sea and say, said you cannot uh, overflow the boundaries that I have set. And I thank you for that today, God. I want to praise you. I want to magnify you Hallelujah. We know that your hand is upon us today. I pray that every person watching this video would sense the nearness of your presence right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray today for Michelle Walker and Betty Cossey for their family as they are grieving the loss of, of their loved one today. We pray, God, that you would just comfort them, that you would strengthen them today. We pray, Lord, for the family of Shane May that you would comfort their hearts in his passing in Jesus' name. We pray for Chloe today as she's starting these immunoglobulin infusions and going through these treatments now over the next year. And in her time of transition, moving to Georgia, Lord, to deal with all of this, we pray, God, that you would just strengthen her, encourage her. Lord, I thank you for everything that you've done in her life recently. And we pray, God, that she would just continue to receive everything that you have for her. We pray, Lord, today for those who are suffering with migraines. Melena and Beth and Marcia need your healing touch this morning. In Jesus' name, we believe for your touch. Lord, those who are battling with COVID right now, we know, Lord, that you are our healer. Hallelujah. Touch them right now, we pray. In Jesus' name, each and every one, William and Grover Straysoner, JB's sister, LaVon, Miss Angie, John Vaughn, and Pastor Carl Adams, Debbie's family who have been dealing with COVID, Zek Osgood's dad, Judy Johnson's sister and her family, Carmen's Aunt Norma, we thank you, Lord, that she's continuing to improve. We thank you that Dee Dee's family members, her sister and her family are improving. We pray, Lord, for Dee Dee's niece, uh, great niece, Emery, that she would receive a healing touch today as well. You see these others who are dealing with chronic respiratory problems. We believe for healing for them today, for Don and Betty and for Robbie and Kendra. We pray, Lord, for J.R. Johnson dealing with pneumonia and other illnesses today. We pray for Judy Williams, Lord, that she would continue to recover from this sinus infection. We pray for Zach Osgood's brother today for healing of seizure disorder. Lord, we just want to give you praise 
We just want to give you thanks, Lord, because we know that you're moving right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We pray, Lord, for those who are suffering with back pain today. You're the healer of uh, problems with our uh, our joints and our limbs today, our bones, God. We pray, God, for your healing today. We curse arthritis in the name of Jesus. We curse every affliction, Lord, today that is uh, bringing pain in our bodies right now. We pray for Barbara Owens and Bob Perkins believing for healing of shingles. For those with heart issues today, we believe for a miracle. We pray for Jasmine today, Lord, dealing with premature labor issues. We believe, God, for her pregnancy, Lord, to uh, uh, to result in a healthy child and for the mother to be healthy, God. We pray for these children who need a physical touch today. Touch Myra and Lorelei. Touch Jenna and Tucker today as they battle with cancer. We pray, Lord, for... Uh, Abel Ray today, and for Tano Lopez, for Abram Page, for Grady's grandson, Lord. You are our healer. You're our provider. We pray for Jamie, Joe, and Frank today, Lord, for a healing touch. We pray, God, for all those who are battling cancer this morning. Lord, you've heard every name that we've mentioned in prayer. You are faithful, God. You are with them. Hallelujah. Whatever has come into our lives, Lord, you have allowed it, God. You you know, God, that whatever we're going through, Lord, that you are still on the throne. We know that you're still on the throne today, and you are bigger than these problems. We believe for miracles and signs and wonders among your people today. We believe for testimonies of, of uh, cancer-free diagnoses, Lord, to be posted even this week uh, out of these requests. In Jesus' name, we pray for those with Parkinson's disease those battling with MS and GI issues. We pray, God, for um, those who are struggling with diabetes today. Lord, touch Terry's friend, Marcia and, and Tim Workman, Emily Stanley and Cheryl and Brother Pulliam and myself. Lord, we need your healing touch. We pray for Christian and Titus today that they would receive healing of juvenile diabetes. We believe for Jim Connor, Lord, as he awaits a kidney transplant. We know, God, that you're moving on his behalf today. By faith, we receive these things that we ask today. We pray for Brother Pulliam's brother this morning, God, believing for his healing. We pray for JB today and for his family, Lord, as he's been on hospice care for quite some time. Lord, we know that you've been with him every step of the way. Be his strength today, God. Be his family strength today, Lord. We believe for continued recovery for Megan and for baby Brantley, for Brother Huey, for Carmen's cousins Kelly and Shannon, for Tina's mother and Sheila Sappington, for Russ and Anita and for Eric today. Lord, for these others who have health needs, uh, we believe, God, for your touch upon them, for Kevin Gossett, for Morgan and Meredith, for Jimmy Holden, for Bobby Larmy and Nicole, for Regina Bishop and Shirley Garner, for Judy's sister, Mary, for Shirley Ruminer and for Erica Ruff today. In Jesus' name, Lord, move in these spiritual needs today. We believe for spiritual breakthrough in our churches. Lord, we pray, God, that the messages that were preached yesterday, Lord, would have fallen upon fertile hearts, Lord, to receive your word, that it might grow, that it might expand in their lives. So, Lord, you're wanting to affect a turnaround among your people today, and we believe, God, for your move in our lives. We pray for baby G today, for that adoption that's going on, for Annette and Dave, for Grace's best friend's family, and for her friends today. We pray for James and Angela and their family. We lift up Sheila Outlaw this morning. We pray for Mark and Caitlin and for Marcia and Britt, you see their family needs today, God. We pray for Marcia's friend and her family, believing for their salvation. We pray for Debbie's family. We pray for our Mingo RCF residents. I thank you for each of them who were in the service yesterday and what you're doing in their lives, what you're going to do in our Bible study this week. Hallelujah. We thank you for that first-time guest yesterday in our service, moving his life. Lord, touch Hunter today, God. Lord, direct his paths, we pray. We pray, God, for our Job Corps students that they would be able to uh, have a reopened facility. We pray, God, for the Sappington family and for Regina's family. 
for Art Chandler, for Beulah's family. We lift up all those who are in need of deliverance uh, from addiction today. We pray for Caroline's family, for Alicia, for Dee Dee's biological father and his family. We pray today, God, for Rebecca Rush and for her family, for Judy and Mike's family, for their unspoken needs for their grandchildren, and for Rebecca's mother, Dana. We pray for Cheryl's family member. We pray for Josiah and for Terry's children, for Pam's children, for Charles and Amber Gossett, for Barbara Owen's salvation today, for Jennifer and Brenda's family. Lord, touch Brenda and Donnie today. Strengthen and encourage them, Lord. We pray for Andrea. You see the unspoken need, Lord, that she's dealing with right now. Hallelujah. We pray, God, that she would continue to grow in you, that she would become everything that you desire for her to be. We pray, Lord, for Brother Aaron and Sister Rachel Castillo in Springfield as they're endeavoring, Lord, to establish that new work. We pray, God, for uh, the Burmese Preaching Point in Bebo Mill uh, in the St. Louis area. God, we pray for the pastor and his wife there. We pray for Victor Jackson and his family as they're working to raise up a new work in Orlando. Lord, we need more churches. We need our current churches to be strong, Lord, and to be sending uh, laborers into the harvest. Uh, help us, God, to do that. Help us to reach into new areas. We pray for Brother Gorley today, Lord, in still that Spanish work that has started there. In Jesus' name, Lord, move today, we pray. In Jesus' name, we thank you, God, for what you're doing. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. God bless you this morning. Thank you for praying with me. So many things for us to pray about, and I thank you for helping me to carry this burden of prayer today. I pray God's blessings upon your day as you begin your week. I believe it's going to be a great week, amen, because the Lord is on our side. He is with us. So go with him today. Uh, go encouraged and strengthened. And I'll see you tomorrow morning right here on Facebook Live at 7.30 a.m.